So in this short video, we will discuss the differences between an ideal gas and a real gas. So to start with first, we will see the first point under ideal gas. So for ideal gas, the equation of state, the equation of state for ideal gas is simple. It is given as PV equals to RT. So equation of state is the relationship between PV and T. It is a PVT relationship. So PV equals to RT. So in some cases you might see PV equals to NRT. But in this case, this volume is molar volume. I am writing this molar volume. So because this is molar volume, hence it is V by N. V by N is molar volume. So I have taken the N in the left hand side and that is how I get PV equals to RT. So this P is the pressure. This P is the pressure and this T is the temperature. T is my temperature. And what is R? R is simply R is simply the gas constant. Universal, universal gas constant. Universal gas constant. So this is how we can write the equation of state. The equation of state for ideal gas looks simple. It is PV equals to RT. But for real gases, there are a wide varieties of equation of states. So the particular one which we will discuss here is the Van der Waals equation of state. So this is the equation of state for real gas. I have taken the Van der Waals equation of state. So again P is the pressure, T is the temperature, R is the universal gas constant. What is this V? This V is the molar volume. This V is the molar volume which is equal to total volume divided by the number of moles. But what is this A and B? So this A and B are interesting over here. A is equal to, let me write it over here. So this A is a constant which accounts for the molecular attraction and B, B is another constant which accounts for the molecular size. These two are very important and this is what makes this Van der Waals equation different from this ideal gas equation of state. That is they have taken the molecular attraction and the molecular size into account. Whereas in the ideal gas equation of state no such terms exist. So with this now we will move on to the second point which is so the intermolecular forces of attraction is zero for an ideal gas. For an ideal gas it is assumed that there is no intermolecular forces of attraction. But for real gas the intermolecular forces of attraction is not neglected for a real gas. So it is clear by the above example that I have shown that is the uh, equation of state. The equation of state for the real gas is simple it is PV equals to RT. But for real gas, I have taken the Van der Waals equation of state where clearly you can see that two terms are present A and B where this A term, this A term is solely because of the molecular attraction. This constant A is taken to account for the molecular attraction. That is for real gases, we cannot neglect the intermolecular forces of attraction. But in, but in case of ideal gas, the intermolecular forces of attraction is neglected. So next we will move on to the third point. So for ideal gas, the volume of the gas molecule is negligible in comparison to the volume of the entire gas. So what this means is that suppose, suppose this is the entire gas, this is the entire gas. So it will have the gas molecules, the gas molecules will be present. So this entire volume, this entire volume is massive in comparison to the smaller gas molecules that is this gas molecules the volume of this gas molecule is negligible when compared with the total gas volume so this is what this point says the volume of the gas molecule is negligible when compared to the volume of the entire gas what this means to say is that we are neglecting the volume of each of the molecules that is the molecular size is neglected for an ideal gas but this is not true for the case of real gas so for a real gas the volume of the gas molecules is not neglected so we have seen in the van der waals equation of state p plus a by v square times times v minus b this is equals to rt so here this a this a term this a term is a constant which accounts for the molecular attraction and this b term this b term is a constant this b term is a constant which accounts for the molecular size this accounts for the molecular 
size. So clearly the molecular volume, the gas volume is not neglected in this case. The volume of the individual gas molecules are not neglected for a real gas. But for an ideal gas, the equation is simply PV equals to RT. So clearly there is no sign of the individual gas molecules. You can see in the equation itself that nowhere they have taken into account the individual gas molecules volume. So this is the third point. Now the fourth point is so the fourth point says that the internal energy of an ideal gas is only a function of temperature. So internal energy of an ideal gas is only a function of temperature and for real gas so the internal energy of a real gas depends on both temperature and pressure. So now we will move on to the fifth point. So the fifth point is on the basis of the compressibility factor. So what is the compressibility factor? So this is a dimensionless ratio which is denoted by Z. It is a dimensionless ratio which is denoted by Z. It is equal to PV by RT. It is equal to PV by RT or it is equal to volume by volume of the ideal gas. So this is how we can write the compressibility factor. Now for an ideal gas, for an ideal gas the compressibility factor is always equal to 1. For an ideal gas the compressibility factor equals to 1. And you can see it from this expression itself. If Z equals to 1 then what can I write? I can simply write PV equals to RT which is the ideal gas equation of state. So this is for the ideal gas. But for real gas, for real gases I have a plot over here which is the compressibility factor versus pressure. So for ideal gas the Z is always equal to 1. For ideal gas the compressibility factor is always equal to 1. But for real gases like nitrogen, hydrogen, methane and carbon dioxide the Z is not equal to 1. It is either greater than 1 or less than 1. So we can see that Z which is the compressibility factor gives a measure of how much the gas deviates from the ideal gas. That is how much the gas is deviating from the ideal gas. So this is an important point. Remember that for ideal gas the Z will be equal to 1 and for real gases Z will be either greater than 1 or less than 1. So now we will move on to the next point. So at last we will study examples. So helium is close to an ideal gas. This is because helium exists in atomic form. Helium exists in stable atomic form. Hence the interatomic forces of attraction for helium, the interatomic forces of attraction for helium is very less. And as I said in the second point, as I mentioned in the second point that the intermolecular forces of attraction is zero for an ideal gas. Hence helium comes close to becoming an ideal gas. Helium is close to an ideal gas. For real gases, there are a lot of examples to oxygen. These are all real gases. But remember one important thing that gases, real gases, real gases at high temperature, at high temperature, at high temperature and low pressure and low pressure, they tend to become ideal gas. They approaches ideal gas behavior, ideal gas behavior. So this is all about this video. Uh, what we have seen is we have seen some points. We have seen five points of difference between the real, real gas and the ideal gas. We have also seen the van der Waals equation of state and using this equation of state we have made certain distinctions about this intermolecular forces of attraction and the volume of the gas molecules. So that is all for this video. Thank you.